our today's uh, presenter is Dr. Zishan Ali. Um, the topic of his presentation is groundwater storage depletions in Pakistan and India from space and ground-based observations. <clears throat> Let me introduce Dr. Zishan, um, our today's presenter. Dr. Zishan is working as an assistant professor at the Department of Earth and Environmental Sciences at Bahriya University in Karachi, Pakistan. Uh, before his current position, uh, he was working as a senior research fellow at the International Islamic University in Islamabad. Dr. Ali has carried out his doctoral studies at the National Ching Kong University in Taiwan. Uh, his research work, uh, research work includes natural hazards in resources management. His PhD work is uh, based on groundwater estimation and its impact on land subsidence, mainly in the industry region in South Asia. By this, I pass on the floor to Dr. Zishan. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Fazil. Uh, thank you, uh, the organizers and also the audience. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the IRC for giving me the opportunity to present my work here and also to look for the future collaboration. Uh, I'm here to discuss about the groundwater storage conditions <laughs> in Pakistan and India from uh, space and ground observation data. Uh, currently, I'm working as a student professor here in our Department of Earth and Environmental Sciences, Perry University. Uh, coming to my uh, outlines, uh, we will be discussing about the introduction objective of this case study, which we are going to discuss uh, study area, and also data set and methodology and result and discussion and further conclusion. And we will be looking forward for some uh, outcome there are and also uh, for future collaboration as well. Uh, first of all, I would like to talk about the overall global perspective of groundwater, uh, how the groundwater is important component for the global water cycle, and also it's a very important resource uh, to sustain for the agriculture, industrial, and also domestic activities in many parts of the world. Uh, not only in many parts, but almost all the parts where we have a human body and the water cycle and water uh, importance is for all the either it's uh, abiotic or uh, human being as well. So this is one of the important cause that why the groundwater or why the water is important and how we can utilize it in a proper way. Uh, particularly in most of the uh, high population countries like China and also India, are uh, arid regions uh, lacking the adequate alternative resource of fresh water. Uh, this is mainly because we don't have alternative water resource, so we have to use a uh, groundwater for that one. Uh, because water is a need for the, every human body, either whatever it is, so it's a need. So we need to uh, complete that need from either groundwater or surface water, whatever it is possible. Uh, the excessive groundwater extraction uh, can lead to the regional groundwater resource scarcity, uh, which is the global uh, issue right now in different countries, uh, because uh, different countries are trying to store a different uh, part of water in a different uh, reservoirs, and also to utilize it in the future for next generation as, a, as, as well. Uh, it's a significant impact on the ecosystem and also economic and social developments as well. Uh, which is an important role in the near future, that how if we don't have this uh, natural resource, which is important for the agriculture industry and also domestic utilization. So how we can run our industry, how we can utilize our uh, other uh, usage. So that is, that's why uh, we need to store the water or groundwater, whatever resource we have uh, to pass it on for the next generation from right now. Uh, groundwater extraction, basically, if we talk about the overall perspective, uh, that is the unmanaged exploitation of groundwater extraction in agriculture and also urban environment uh, led to the land subsidence and reservoir depletion. So coming to the point, uh, if we uh, look at the overall perspective that how it can affect us. Uh, so one problem is that we are basically utilizing the resource uh, which we have, that is groundwater. Secondly, whenever we, we utilize that resource, so there will be some consequences, uh, which include the land subsidence, and also uh, there will be a dry season of uh, fresh water from the aquifer system, uh, which become an uh, opportunity resource. Uh, whenever we have some dry season, uh, where we don't have a reservoir water or uh, fresh water uh, from streams, from uh, snow melting, so then we have 
to use that resource from the groundwater by using pumping or different other resources is possible. Uh, for the reduction of land subsidence due to groundwater withdrawal, uh, there are multiple uh, usage uh, and multiple paths for the uh, utilization of that uh, process. That is either first is about the reduction of groundwater extraction, and also the second part is uh, either we can use the artificial recharge pathway as well. Uh, now coming toward the main perspective that why, uh, why and how it will affect uh, the groundwater storage depletion. First of all, as we discussed about the agriculture perspective, uh, like uh, whoever uh, person he is, he needs some food. So for agriculture purpose, the water is very important. Uh, in If you talk about the Indus Basin region, which is my case study, so we have, uh, we have a lot of agriculture within that specific area. So we need uh, groundwater or surface water, if it's surface water is possible, but if uh, we don't have a surface water, so then the alternative way is to use the groundwater. So that's why one of the main important utilization for the irrigation that is in that specific area, that is for agriculture. Uh, secondly, there is some imbalance between the recharge and discharge of groundwater resource. Now coming toward the point that how there is imbalance, uh, we are extracting a lot of groundwater, but on another way, uh, the recharge is very low. Uh, so if we just uh, take an example that if you don't have a recharge, uh, low recharge, but high discharge, so there will be a groundwater depletion. Uh, that why the main reason within that one is one of the way is the urbanization in the area. Uh, because whenever we have a high concreted area within that one, uh, infiltration will be low. So that's why we have, uh, there is no recharge for the groundwater. So that's why we have some issues for that one. Uh, we have a water stress on the Indus River Basin, uh, as we discussed about the overall uh, issues. And also we have a lot of utilization within that area, uh, but we don't have that much uh, water flow within that uh, Indus region. Uh, only the source of usage uh, for industries and uh, residential area is, is that specific groundwater. So that is one of the way that like we discussed in the start that industries and uh, residential area, uh, they need uh, water. So water is basically in the groundwater, we don't have a reason why. Uh, for all the above reason, uh, main reason is important uh, reason is the lack of resources. Uh, that's why we are basically using the groundwater, which is the easy way for to get the fresh water. And uh, now uh, the point is that if we have the uh, water reservoirs, uh, if we have a lot of resources like many different developed countries have, so we might not use the groundwater that much as right now we are using it. Uh, if we just look at the global perspective, uh, so we have, we are coming in the uh, red zone, which is uh, alarming zone for the groundwater within this uh, industry region basin. So that, uh, those are some uh, main causes uh, which basically uh, give input toward the groundwater depletion. And also uh, if we have, uh, now uh, if we talk about the overall way that if we don't, if we have a lot of groundwater depletion, those problems will occur much more uh, like agriculture imbalance and also the industry will be affected, uh, residential area will be affected. So those type of problem will be occurred much more uh, with the passage of time. Uh, now coming toward that why land is subsidizing within the area that like we discussed about the uh, uh, groundwater and there are some natural causes and also after that we have some uh, human being uh, induced includes the withdrawal of uh, subsurface reservoir uh, that is basically uh, the, uh, the groundwater and also sometimes oil and also underground uh, mine and minerals as well. Uh, so this is one of the just a small example which uh, we have uh, taken like uh, how the groundwater is uh, ground is subsidizing with the passage of time and this is one of the small example uh, that how the uh, the depression is coming whenever we have a high groundwater extraction within the area uh, coming toward the regional case study that why we need a regional uh, case study 
Uh, local based relationship can be found using the ground based observation. Like in developed countries, we have uh, ground based sensors which can be used uh, for different uh, monitoring systems like groundwater, uh, land subsidence, air pollution, and different perspectives. Uh, but if you talk about the regional case studies, so we, we need to use a remote sensing data uh, which can find the relationship within that one. Uh, multiple regional studies have been already done by this one, uh, but the heterogeneous properties are not considered so far uh, for this case study, uh, this area. Uh, regional studies uh, need to be shown the relationship of GRACE and uh, based GWS anomalies and uh, groundwater variation using remote sensing based data as many currently don't have the groundwater uh, well monitoring st uh, stations. So that's why uh, we basically conduct this study to use the GRACE data to find the, in this specific country where we don't have the groundwater wells data to watch. Uh, this uh, research basically include the, those are well, the objective of the, uh, this research that include the GRACE based uh, GWS uh, special mapping, which is the groundwater story mapping. Uh, time series analysis we have done for the high groundwater uh, depletion area. And we have done some GWS correlation with the uh, trend data, that is the precipitation data, and also estimation of uh, depth to groundwater level from the grace based GWS. Uh, now, coming toward the study area, uh, which we have focused, that is the, uh, basically the uh, South Asia countries. Uh, uh, we have basically uh, targeted those countries to find the oral uh, perspective that how the groundwater is depleting within that specific areas. Uh, India is most affected country from the groundwater uh, extraction, and also uh, we can you we can see that how much of burden we have on the India because of most affected states of the groundwater storage. Uh, are the Rajasthan, uh, Haryana, and Uttaranchal. Uh, if you just talk about those three states, those uh, states uh, and also the upper area of Punjab is coming in this uh, specific region. So those uh, three or four states are giving the whole food or agriculture perspective toward the whole India. So that's why they have a high stress uh, of groundwater within that area because they have to extract the groundwater uh, to make, to utilize it for the agriculture perspective. Uh, now coming toward the data set, which we have, uh, that is the remote sensing data, which include the grace and trend, and also we have the GILDAS data. Uh, coming toward the detail about the data set, uh, we have the grace, uh, grace is about the gravity recovery and climate experiment uh, data, which is available globally based on uh, 2003 to onward right now. Uh, they have a different collaborator for that one, that is Center for Space uh, Research and also Jet Propulsion Laboratory, that is NASA, and also the German Research Center for Geosciences. Uh, and also the GRACE data is using a seasonal and annual groundwater change and stored groundwater and also ice and snow to be quantified by it. Uh, coming toward the GILDAS data, uh, that is freely available uh, for the soil moisture, uh, snow water equivalent and also the canopy water storage. The trim data is basically the tropical uh, rainfall measurement uh, mission that is uh, satellite joined by the uh, JAXA and also NASA to find the precipitation for the climate research and can be ut utilized for the meteorological analysis. Uh, multiple uh, research and multiple studies has uh, used this data for the precipitation analysis. Now, the product is available for the whole group and then it, in the range of uh, 50 degree north and 50 degree south. Uh, the monthly data have a three a product, which is special resolution of 0.25 and also uh, 0 0.5 and one degree as well. Uh, now coming toward the research methodology flowchart. Uh, basically, uh, like we discussed in uh, step by step, the whole process, that how we basically conducted this research study. Uh, so uh, we gone through different data set input and then we have di different processing. Uh, so we have a uh, trim data, uh, grace data and build us and also the groundwater uh, monitoring data. Uh, basically the groundwater monitoring data is only available for uh, uh, some India data, uh, which we have got it. Uh, we are trying to use, utilize some uh, data from Pakistan as well. Uh, to make it some more interesting studies. Uh, 
that further we have utilized the time series analysis and also we have a monthly spatial temporal mapping uh, which is one of the important key component that how we can uh, we can have input from the either monsoon or either how in which months we have a high groundwater extraction from the area uh, which is basically uh, got it by the grace data and we have done some trend analysis as well uh, this is the overall uh, formation of the TWS, which is the terrestrial water storage, uh, which include the different uh, groundwater, uh, snow water effluent, and also some different parameters, which are the input parameter. And for the groundwater, uh, we have to uh, utilize uh, the TWS and all the parameter to get the groundwater storage in all this. And we have used some uh, trend analysis as well to find the overall trend that how pattern time series analysis can be conducted. After uh, getting the result from this um, gray space analysis, we have basically utilized that uh, to find the depth to groundwater level estimation and prediction approach as well. In this approach, we have basically utilized the, uh, the data which we have got it from the groundwater uh, that is uh, collaboration uh, collaboration data uh, that is available from the India. And also we have some prediction uh, based on the GRACE-based GWS. Uh, in this here, uh, we just, I would just like to explain about the overall scenario that how we have basically done it. So first of all, we have a data for uh, the, from the uh, Institute data that is for four months, uh, which is uh, January, uh, my August and also November. So considering that uh, the nearest neighbor, uh, we have basically predicted for every month. Uh, so that was basically uh, the interest was that how we can basically predict uh, using the grace based analysis uh, for the groundwater estimation. So that was overall uh, the observational data is uh, availability is seasonally. Uh, but we need to predict it for monthly. So that's why we have combined and used the different model uh, to predict it for the next month or uh, the previous month. So that was the overall approach for that one. Uh, for In this approach, we have basically like, uh, I already talked about the, uh, the groundwater uh, monthly data that is uh, got from the grace data. Uh, but the seasonal data that was utilized from the uh, institute data. So we have basically combined it and we have basically used the geographic weighted regression model uh, that is basically working on the based on the space space. So we have utilized that model uh, to find and to predict for monthly based groundwater estimation. Uh, now coming toward uh, the result uh, that is about the monthly spatial mapping of groundwater storage. Uh, we have basically uh, gotten the groundwater storage uh, monthly anomaly that uh, are basically shown here. So we can see here uh, about the about the oral perspective that how we can utilize it for. So now uh, you can see here that how we can utilize it for this uh, specific months. Uh, this is the upper region of India, which we have highly targeted from the groundwater depletion uh, within the area. So this is, uh, we can see here from here, from this area to here, uh, this is the overall industry uh, basin. So we can see that how much this area has been affected. Uh, what we have done here is that we have used that for monthly base analysis. Uh, we have utilized that for monthly special analysis and then further uh, based on the grace base and uh, GWS, we got the special uh, groundwater storage anomalies. And the area included four countries, like we discussed about uh, this one as well. Uh, we can see here, uh, from here, the northern India and the central Pakistan is a part of most affected area from the groundwater uh, storage depletion. Uh, coming toward uh, some start point, which we have discussed, uh, that was about the central Pakistan area and also the northern India. Uh, that is the most uh, agriculture part of the of the, those countries. So that's why we have we are utilizing that uh, water and we have a very high groundwater extraction uh, from that specific area for the agriculture purposes. Uh, the reason is that uh, we have a lake of 
uh, ground uh, surface water that is reservoir or also uh, the river basin uh, river water so that's why we are using the ground water which uh, which is not good for right now and also for next generation as well if we didn't uh, make it some in a manageable way uh, if we talk about the southern part of the india uh, that have a high recharge in the monsoon months so we can see that overall precipitation intake and also uh, the southern part of the india that have a high differences within the area and how it's giving how grace can help us to find uh, the input and also outgoing uh, sources of the groundwater you know. uh, then we have the uh, time series uh, variation uh, for the tws uh, trim that is uh, the precipitation data and also we have some uh, GWS. Uh, we can see here, we have basically like we talked about the, those three regions uh, which we have targeted. So in this three region, we have basically correlated all the three T uh, TWS that is uh, terrestrial water storage, uh, trim data and also the uh, GWS that is uh, ground water storage. So we can see the very high depletion within the area uh, overall, if we talk about this, uh, first of all, I would just love uh, discuss that this is the missing data uh, between the grace uh, that uh, grace data was basically uh, mission was uh, had some gap, so that's why this is missing data. So uh, after coming to the point that uh, those two area were highly affected by the groundwater, uh, utilization of groundwater is very high. And we can see here that with the time passage of time that from 2003 onward to 2020, uh, we have a very high groundwater depletion within the E. Uh, and also, we can see here uh, that the groundwater is depleting and also the precipitation level is also decreased within the area as compared to uh, before. Now, coming towards the validation, because validation is one of the important role for the whenever we talk about the remote sensing data or analysis. So uh, the grace-based GWS uh, with the groundwater observa uh, ground observation data, uh, we have predicted that one and also correlated with the ground observation data that is seasonally available. So we have uh, find the validation results show a very high correlation uh, with the GWS in some area, uh, but in some uh, points, uh, we can see the R square, which is 0 0.6 as well. So there is some variation within the within the area, and also we have some variation with the passage of time that uh, that is available from seasonal data uh, from passage with the passage of time. So there is some uh, variation within the area as well. Uh, but if we talk about the overall, uh, so we have a high correlation that is including 0 0.8 to 0 0.9 as well. Uh, we, uh, now coming toward the depth to groundwater level estimation from the GRACE and uh, GWS, uh, which we discussed in our uh, approach as well in methodology section. Uh, after the overall analysis uh, from the groundwater and also for the GRACE-based analysis, uh, now we just conduct a study further elaborated for the uh, only India because we have some points from India so that's why we just uh, conducted this study for the India-based region. Uh, we didn't do it the whole South Asia region because uh, lack of, in, uh, lack of uh, data set and also uh, some uh, outliers are coming whenever we have a very high special resolution within the area. Uh, in this uh, outcomes, we have some observational data estimation for the month of uh, January, May, August, and November. So we have just, uh, first of all, we have uh, estimated uh, the groundwater table for this uh, four months uh, based on the in-situ data. And after that, uh, we have utilized that estimated um, a special map like January uh, for next month that is filled. Uh, so based on that one, uh, one thing uh, we have idealized that is the existing data. Uh, based on the existing data, based on the same situation, uh, we have used it. Uh, there might be some uh, set uncertainties, like uh, if there is some high precipitation within the, that month or within uh, some high recharge. So that can be considered, that is also considered, already considered by the GRACE data. 
So we are based on those uh, analysis. We are uh, we are come up with this uh, prediction that uh, we can utilize uh, the situ data and also grace based data for the next uh, month to predict it for specific months, uh, which we don't have yet uh, right now. Uh, based on the nearest neighbor and monthly GWS, uh, the depth is predicted that is already uh, shown in this months. Uh, we have some uh, root mean square error for three to uh, four meter of inaccuracies within the area uh, due to the uh, gray space uh, GWS. And the, currently we have uh, outcome of uh, groundwater level estimation. So we have some inaccuracy uh, or root mean square error of uh, three to four uh, meter within that uh, specific area. Uh, the area have a very high groundwater uh, depth. In this area we can see here that is uh, more than around 50 meter uh, in some uh, specific regions. Uh, we can see here in the month of monsoon, the groundwater level is recharging within this, uh, which is shown in the some last months as well. So we can see here that we have a high recharge within this month. So which, uh, basically giving the high groundwater table as uh, rising as well in this specific area. Now coming toward uh, the conclusion uh, of overall study, uh, the gray space GWS uh, time series and hotspot analysis that conducted has shown the special temporal mapping uh, and evaluated that the Northern India uh, is having a high groundwater uh, storage depletion as compared to Southern part of the India. Uh, the time series analysis basically were done to show uh, within that hotspot analysis, uh, hotspot areas, which we have discussed in three regions, uh, three states, sorry, uh, to find the area of with a decreasing trend of 4.4 centimeter within uh, every year. Uh, the, monsoon uh, the monsoon season uh, have given a high recharge uh, to the groundwater, which is analyzed in the special mapping in southern part as compared to the northern part of the India. Uh, the depth to groundwater level estimated maps uh, shows that the most of the northern area is having a deep water level as compared to a uh, southern part and also we have some find the recharge within the monsoon months as well. Now, uh, coming toward the future work approach and uh, it would be uh, nice to discuss and to get some innovative ideas and uh, discuss it in uh, near future as well. Uh, basically, we are uh, going to where the, the area is highly affected uh, with the land subsidence due to groundwater extraction. Uh, the next work can be done to predict the land subsurface land subsidence uh, according to the aquifer compaction. Uh, one thing uh, which is important that how we can basically uh, find the compaction that is equated, uh, which is which need to be uh, find that how much it's compacting. And secondly, uh, one more point that is the unconfined and confined aquifer, how much that is basically depleting within the area. Uh, if, we, if I just talk about the overall scenario, uh, in different cities, uh, we have some high. So that's why the groundwater table is going downward. So in some cities, that is alarming for the for country or for overall region as well, that uh, people are now going toward the confined aquifer for the groundwater pumping, uh, which is very alarming right now because uh, the confined aquifer uh, recharge is very uh, tough as compared to unconfined aquifer. So that, that would be very problematic in near future, uh, which need to be conducted a study that how we can uh, basically utilize that information or our groundwater are also the remote sensing based information that, that we can basically get the information that how much of the confined aquifer has been utilized for the uh, groundwater extraction. Uh, it also the further include the geological setting and also the sediment at the vertical layer on the subsurface sediment is important to be considered. Uh, now coming toward uh, if you talk about the uh, porosity and permeability of that specific sediments. So we need to discuss or we need to uh, know about those situations that how we can 
basically go with that one, how we can handle it on the subsurface sediment and either it's uh, very, um, th that, that, that need to be studied that how we can uh, basically predict it or uh, which type of analysis which can uh, be conducted, which can be helpful for the groundwater uh, extraction or high recharge food in the area. Uh, coming toward one of the point that uh, INSAR based study uh, can be conducted uh, to show the overall input uh, from every, every aquifer toward the la land subsidence within the area, uh, which is important uh, because whenever you talk about the groundwater extraction, whenever you talk about the oil extraction, whenever you talk about the mine extraction, so there will be a compaction. Uh, either uh, there is a compaction due to uh, this uh, specific uh, for example, resource extraction, uh, or there is some earthquake waste, uh, something like that. So, but the land subsidence uh, need to be uh, studied in this uh, specific region uh, using the INSAR based analysis, uh, which can be further used for the groundwater extraction and, uh, and also uh, this uh, multiple uh, fans uh, can be studied using this uh, case study as well. Uh, thank you so much for your attention.